And welcome back to another episode of the Bushwhackers Breakdown, and today we are taking a look at sushi. So, um, a brief synopsis. Um, basically, the Bushwhackers are finishing up another episode of Lee's podcast, and they can't decide on where they want to eat. Um, JJ wants to do pizza, but Lee decides, you know, we're going to do sushi. Luca is a bit apprehensive, and he decides, you know what, maybe sushi isn't the best thing. And he tells them a story about... Um, a restaurant in Osaka where a mother octopus, after witnessing her babies being chopped up and eaten, breaks out, kills everybody, and grabs the remaining babies and flees into the ocean. That doesn't stop. Lee and JJ in they go, where, oddly enough, the same thing happens. And they're thrown out as the octopus continues to fight with the staff. And rather than face it, they turn tail and run. So this was one of the earlier episodes that I that I written, probably wrote way back in 2017, and it was also one of the first episodes that I uh, began animating. And it took me a while because I was just trying to find a unique style of drawing, and it was one of those episodes where I would start it, you know, just start drawing it, get frustrated and stop, and there were long gaps in between. And for me, it was just... It was just trying to find that unique style because I'd read so many comics and watched so many cartoons and thought, I really, really want to find something that's unique. But in the end, um, I came to realize that simplicity was the be- was the better um, was the better strategy. So some of, so so if you if you watch the, if you watch the episode, some of the cartoon drawings may be a little bit different. Those are just taken from the earlier renderings and just sort of you know fit them in there as best as possible because I didn't want to get rid of all of the drawings I, I really like some of them but some of the character designs had to undergo several different iterations before I found something that worked um, and I had also bought a tablet back in 2017 so this was so I was still getting used to drawing on a on a different you know on something different because I've been so used to pen and paper at that time but um, overall, I, I was pretty satisfied with it. Um, once I had, once I had gotten the feel for drawing on a tablet, everything kind of fell into place at that point. So this, so this for me was the very first episode where I began experimenting with something that that was f- fairly fairly new, and now it's grown into something that's a bit more familiar, for lack of a better word. Um, this episode, um, this episode is also a manifesto into my dislike of sushi at that time, because 2017, 2018, I'd suffered a lot of stomach problems, and I had eaten some raw food, namely sushi and ceviche, and I was like, you know what, I, I, I don't like this, this is making me sick, I hate it so much. I mean, how crazy must you be to want to eat something that's not cooked and could potentially carry a lot of bacteria and could kill you? So for the longest time, I, I was anti-sushi, I was anti-raw food, because I felt this was a, f- a very foul and disgusting thing. And it may not be obvious, but to me, this was just my manifesto, manifesto as to why I don't like sushi. And to couple it, I even included an urban legend about, oh, about this octopus that wanted to be eaten. And it was actually my first attempt to at writing an urban legend because I'd also been obsessed with reading about urban legends, cryptids, cre- creepy pastas, all that, all that good stuff. And I was like, you know what? I think I might have a hand in, in trying that because I figured it's sort of believable that maybe an animal might go ape shit and try to attack people because it doesn't want to be eaten. Because I mean, animals are intelligent. I mean, they're not stupid. I mean. I, I mean, they would have the awareness to know of when they're going to be led to the slaughter to be consumed by us. So that was another. Um, so that was another thing that I just wanted to um, make an attempt at. It was to just write some urban legend, kind of apply a little bit of animal psychology into the whole 
the whole mix thing. But, uh, you, you know, but I honestly think it fell flat on his face. I don't think it really stuck, but at the same time, I really didn't care. I just wanted to try something new. And me introducing cryptids and creepypastas and urban legends into the mix, I thought that was pretty pretty significant and I'm glad I tr I'm glad I put it in there so in the episode um, Lee is doing a movie podcast and when I wrote it Lee and I were trying to get a movie podcast off the ground he was reviewing we were doing an episode where he was reviewing Rogue One which was that um, Star Wars movie with Force Whitaker and Felicity Jones and Sad to say, it, it, it never got off the ground, and we, we made another attempt at it. We were reviewing Hobbs and Shaw, but that didn't take off the ground, too, and I can admit it was my fault, really. But hopefully, if we can try to get get a third iteration off the ground, I think that might work. Um, just because I feel like Lee is one of the most insightful people um, when it comes to movies, and even though I majored in filmmaking in college, I still defer to him on some of his judgments. <laughs> Just sadly to say, some of my taste in movies are a little bit um, eccentric. And I remember this one time, um, I think it was back in November, where I, where Lee asked me to co come up with my top five favorite movies. And when my choices didn't include any Nolan films, he flipped out and he started pontificating. I thought, wow, he's really acting like a movie pope. So I think if we do another movie podcast, I, I think it would be called The Movie Pope because Lee really really does make it very clear what your choices need to be and if they're not that then you're wrong and you ought to be excommunicated or whatever but that's a th but that's also a constant theme in the other bushwhackers episodes that lee does uh, you know you know this podcast on the side along with his daytime job and really that's more of his passion him being in the bushwhackers is sort of like him just being forced into it sort of against his will I kind of think he enjoys being in the Bushwhackers, but he just doesn't want to admit it to the other other two, so. Yeah, so, it's all in the day's work. But, yeah, um, that's pretty much my breakdown of Sushi. If you have any other observations or any notes, just feel free to leave them in the comments below. And remember to like, comment, subscribe. Thanks so much for watching. Bye.